Welcome to Le Rendez-vous. My name is Garance Doré and I'm a writer with so many stories to tell and ideas to share that I created this special moment to talk about all the things that are going on in our lives. So come, let's spend a moment together. Le Rendez-vous is brought to you by Doré, the skincare line I co-created, wanting to bring more simplicity and efficacy to our lives. Check out the end of the episode for a special code just for you, the Rendezvous listeners. We're slowly approaching the end of this first season of Le Rendezvous. I am trying to apply to myself all the things that I've learned and to take breaks and reflect on the things that I've created and put out there see how I can make them better and see how much I miss them when I don't do them and basically try to take myself out of the flow so that I can know how to return to it better. It's been so exciting to create this new vocabulary and language for myself. I've been wanting to create a podcast for so many years since after I left the format of my first podcast, pardon my French. And to be honest, I didn't really know where I was going with that. I just had stuff to say. And truly, I'm always saying things because I am the author of a newsletter that's been going on for now about three years in which I express everything and share so much about my life. But this podcast format is a different thing because it's completely unscripted I know that I talk quite slowly and sometimes some of you can think, oh, she's written all that text, but I don't. And that was the idea to keep it as natural and easy to make as I can. I didn't want it to become a big enterprise. I wanted it to be simple, direct and to the core. So what I usually do is uh, I give myself an hour, sit down, write a few ideas about what I'm going to talk about and then just go and do it. And then I edit it a little bit. That's the work. But in my life as a creator, I have a few people around me that are my sounding boards. Some of them are my friends. Some of them are part of my community. And by that, I mean the people who are subscribed to my newsletter. They talk with me, they give me feedback, they tell me what they love the most. And we also have these lives where we share our ideas and go a little bit further and connect. And some of my close friends have told me, why don't you read some of the texts that you write? And I've always felt a little bit shy about this, but I thought that in next season, I have a few ideas that I want to bring to you. And one of them is potentially bring in a little more of my writing. Uh, there is a major difference between the way I write and the way I just talk like this on the podcast. And that is why today I thought I'd share a text that I wrote in 2020, a long time ago now, at the very beginning of the newsletter project, which has been my most cherished project that I've had for many, many years. It's just so free and so private. And this is the place where I completely reconnected with the writing that some of you might know from the early days of my blog, where I didn't feel so scrutinized and I was just enthusiastically sharing everything that I wanted. As the internet became bigger and as everyone was there and kind of so many people knew exactly who I was, it became more difficult to be so public. And that's why when the urge to write again came back to me, I was like, I need to create a safe space for myself. And that is why I created a newsletter. Some of the texts I could never read in public, they're too personal. But for today, I thought I would read this text about leaving my life as an influencer. And it is very symbolic to me to share this one with you. Because if I'm often praised for my courage in living this very privileged world of fashion and influence, 
It actually wasn't a straight line and it wasn't one day to the next. And it's something where I'm still dealing with the aftermath of it sometimes. I'm definitely at the end of it, but it's funny how some people are still disappointed when they realize that I'm not the person that I used to be. It is something that as you persevere in life, you see will happen many times as you grow, as you change, and as you evolve. And this inspires me for a subject for next season, to talk about these changes and how we deal with them when we don't only have to go through them with ourselves, with our close ones, but also now that we have these lives in public, on social media, we have to deal with etiquettes that stay attached to us for many years. And in some ways, I totally get it. And in some ways, I've also profited from it. As the season slowly comes to an end, I will take a break starting beginning of July. I thought it would be a fun and symbolic moment to read this as I truly feel that I am turning a page on that old life. All right. I'm going to stop talking so much, I could talk forever, and I'm going to start reading to you this essay from July of 2020, which is called Life and Death of an Influencer. Here I am on a beautiful boat, speeding on the sparkly Mediterranean Sea. I arrived in Cannes yesterday, and when I got to my hotel room, my bed was covered in presents. I didn't open them right away. I'm tired of opening boxes. I probably sat on the balcony, smoked a cigarette, and wondered how I was going to survive the next three days. I was flown here, first class, to go to a cruise collection. I'm not paid to be here, but everything is taken care of, from the pickup, my home, to the final drop-off. I'll be driven, fed, massaged, and entertained. I'm here because I am part of the privileged crowd of fashion. And the ticket to the cruise collection is like the golden ticket. I'm so lucky. There probably were chocolates and a huge plate of beautiful fruit somewhere in my suite. I probably ate most of the chocolate and left the fruit. My toxic habits keep me going. I probably opened Instagram to check who was here. I actually don't follow anyone who's here. Oh, whoops. I don't even follow the brand that invited me. Change that. Ah, here is a hashtag. I follow the hashtag and I see a river of photos of all the presents on all of the beds. The huge plate of beautiful fruits. Someone had more presents than me. I feel inadequate. I feel insecure. I feel out of place. These are my last days as a fashion influencer. I'm done. I don't post the presents. I barely know who I am anymore, but I know one thing. In my world, we don't fucking do that. We don't show off our stuff. I guess I was raised elegant, and then I started working in fashion, and I mostly forgot. My schedule is here, next to the fruit plate. Oh, no, I need to go. The speedboat is waiting. So. I have brought with me enough outfits for the full three days, and by that I mean at least 12 outfits. I have a stylist, because there is nothing I hate more than stressing about clothes, and it seems like this is what my life has become. But who would complain? Isn't it any girl's dream? My stylist sent me away like I was going on a military mission, one outfit for each photo. If it was just me, I'd put on jeans, a white tee, a pair of rondini, and I'd go to the cafe downstairs to have a pastis with the locals. But then the brand that invited me wouldn't be happy. It would be ungrateful of me, rude. I'll already have to deal with the fact that I didn't post the presents. I probably won't be invited again. 
It's the last fucking time anyway, I remember. I know I said that the last time, but then I got invited again and I just couldn't resist. I'm dressed up now. So much stuff. It's just so complicated. These bags, these sunglasses, this hat, this jewelry, the melting makeup, so shiny. All these years in fashion have given me a real fashion heartburn. I think I can't digest it anymore. It stays stuck in my throat. I get to the hotel lobby. All the beautiful people are here. They're so happy to see me and they're so excited. And they're, we're so lucky. Aren't we lucky? My throat gets tighter. Shit, am I going to cry? Breathe. Jump on that boat. Yeah, that boat. The one with the influencers. After years of fashion, not really knowing what to do with me, not knowing where to sit me, what presents to give me and how to talk to me, like arrogance or deference, I finally have a group that I can be identified with. We are called the influencers. There you go. Took a few years, but we finally got it. So I'm on the boat with the influencers. They're all there. They're all there with all the presents all over them, like me. The bags, the sunglasses, the sun lotion, the beach towels, everything is branded. We're the walking banner ads boat. The atmosphere is a bit awkward. I actually don't really know who anyone is. We leave the port and everyone is jumping around. They're hugging so much. I feel like I'm the only one nobody's best friends with. I feel inadequate, I feel insecure, I feel out of place. Hug selfie, group selfie, selfie selfie. The jumping around lasts enough time to take as many photos in as many angles as possible. Then everyone gets to the job of posting. The boat is silent and no one is talking. No one is best friends anymore. We finally get to the restaurant. More beauty, more perfection, more branding, more beautiful people, and more best friend selfies. When I was a child in Corsica, my dad had a restaurant. His customers often came on yachts and sailboats. From the Italian and the French coast, Gianni Agnelli, Brigitte Bardot, Caroline de Monaco, and others like Mara and Guido, the unfamous ones. We became friends with some of them. I was the wild child from the island and they took me on their boats. We went sailing. We would eat fresh tomatoes and drink rosé on the deck. They were so impossibly chic. Their images are still burnt in my mind. I learned everything I needed to know about being rich and staying elegant. I also learned that it's not easy. What I'm living right now is a pastiche of this life, but I'm not sure of it yet because it looks so great. Because it's been years, years that I am hypnotizing myself. I'm lucky, I'm lucky, I'm lucky, I'm lucky. Am I not so lucky? We're lucky, right? I don't know, really. I don't know where is the joy here. And me, I find joy everywhere, okay? everywhere. Why not here? I beat myself up. Find the fucking joy. Why are you so ungrateful? So I keep taking the speedboats, the helicopters, going to the Amans, looking for the joy, envying those who do, and wondering if there is something wrong with me. Three days went fast, military schedule, delicious foods, glowing people, expensive clothes, chic, understated restaurants, a fashion show, fireworks, photos, photos, photos. I talk with an editor slash model slash influencer, that's what her Instagram profile says, that tells me she spent the last years jet setting from events to events, months on the road from Chanel in China, to Dior in Japan, to Dolce Gabbana in Italy, to... She eats for free, sleeps for free, and resells the presents for money. She thinks she found a secret to life. She tells me she's so lucky. Maybe, maybe she is. I wonder where she is right now. 
It's funny how much misery and opulence intersect. Ostentation often manifests the outdated belief that wealth is something you have to flaunt. That more is better. But the truth is, few people can withstand more. Most of us can't. More is heavy. More attracts terrible types of people. More makes you a slave to more. Count the people on the yacht. Look at them eating at the buffet of life. They couldn't care less who the owner of the yacht is, as long as they can eat. What they don't know yet is the price they have to pay. It takes an education to understand that joy is not at that buffet. You can't steal joy, not for long anyway. I knew inside. I knew since these early days in Corsica. I used to sell croissants in my village. I had a little boat and my brother would drive it and I would deliver warm croissants to the ships in my tiny harbor. I saw the most enormous yachts, those with a helicopter on them. Gianni and Nelly would arrive with full-on fleets, a fantastic vision I'll never forget. We'd be kids and say, Agnelli is here, Agnelli is here. We would run and watch them sail in. And then, just next to the big yachts were the dirty little boats, in serious need of a paid job. You would wonder how they made it through the sea. And yet one day, I remember serving croissants to this happy family, all pressed together on their minuscule, rugged old boat and thinking, in a childlike, not fully developed attempt at a philosophical thought. Look at how joyous they are. The sun shines the same on everyone. So I knew, but I guess I needed to put my theory to practice. Trying to be an influencer was my education. Shifting from taking photos of strangers on the street to taking photos of myself on someone's yacht was my walk through fire. Trying to count my presence like one counts his blessing taught me a thing or two about what material things can do for me, but mostly what they can't. Trying to be a nice girl because I was fed and dressed and lucky told me the price of selling yourself, of betraying yourself. I'd much rather pay for the stuff. My money is a healthier currency than myself. It's because we paid for the things we own that they have value. I still don't know who the fashion influencers are. I don't follow them because the endless photo walks burn my eyes and skew my perception of elegance. It looks like elegance, but it has a funny aftertaste, you know? We shouldn't be mad at them. There is room for everyone in this world. More than ever today, we choose in which reality we want to live. I understand what the fashion industry was trying to do there. Something truly beautiful, but without knowing, it appealed to our lowest impulses and created a whole world of make-believe. It wasn't about elegance or creativity anymore. It was about luxury. Luxus means excess. It worked. We all fed on this dream. But then I had received my education and I moved away. There were exceptions, by the way. Some trips were actually magical. One trip to Japan was so beautiful, so deep, I kept telling myself I was lucky. But this time I really, really was. No need to hypnotize myself. I was fully awake. The world is taking a breath now. No fashion weeks. Apparently, parading presence is less of a thing. But maybe it's just another dream I have. I wouldn't know. It's not my reality anymore. Last time I checked, influencers were traveling around the world with gigantic hats and carrying oranges in a French filet market toad around the streets of Instagram. But I think that was last summer. I like Jack Muse's last show. Oh, and then there is the Bottega thing. I don't know. I don't really care. 
In a yacht somewhere on the Mediterranean lies my life as an influencer. I will never get it back. I'm not invited anymore. So that was an essay I wrote a while back at the beginning of this adventure of my newsletter. It was the very beginning of me being able to put in words this shift that I had taken in my life. It was also, as you probably guessed, the pandemic and when everything stopped for a while. What a, an interesting time. Tell me what you thought about me reading to you. Usually I only do that for Graham, who are like, oh, do you want me to read you my latest letter? Even more when they're funny ones, because I love making him laugh. And a lot of my newsletters are actually much more funny and less hmm, nostalgic and introspective than this one. But I, I don't know why I got inspired to read to you this one specifically. I think it's because this whole season of Le Rendezvous has been about kind of closing a loop for me. It's been about finding you again. Those of you who had been reading me for so many years and who maybe are not subscribed to my newsletter, it's been about kind of putting my hand out and saying hi. And if things have changed around, I think my spirit definitely hasn't. And I know for a lot of you, because I meet you a lot on the streets and I receive a lot of emails that it's the same. There was this sense of, oh, okay, where is she now? What is she doing? What has she become? Because I hadn't shared anything about me for about, hmm, I think it was four or five years. And then I started the newsletter, but it's not public. So people are still confused about what I do. Well, this is what I do. I write. I'm working on a book project. I took my time shifting from one life to another. And I'll just stop talking now. And I will talk to you next week. And I'm sending you so much love. Here is to shift and change and letting go of our old self and who we were and keeping what makes us truly joyful. And here is to not lying to ourselves. If you have to constantly repeat to yourself that you're lucky, maybe actually you're not. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you next week and I'm sending you so much love. Le Rendez-vous is brought to you by Doré. Doré's latest launch, La Micellaire, is a botanical micellar cleansing water that doesn't require rinsing. Minimize bathroom time and maximize outdoor time with our super simple routine. Use code PODCAST10 for 10% of your first order. Thank you for listening to Le Rendez-vous. If you want to know more about me, find out about my newsletter and my community. Find me on Instagram at Garance Doré or at my website at garance.world. And well, if you'd like to find out how to spell that crazy name, just check out the show notes. Until next time, sending you love.